Stand in the fear of God and let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Blessed is he who comes in the Lord. Bless the Lord. I read the Holy Gospel of St. Matthew. Stand in the fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel. A reading from the Gospel according to our teacher, Saint Matthew the Evangelist. May his blessing be with us The Psalms of our teacher David, the prophet and the king. Blessings be with us. Amen. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. So I will sing praise to your name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, our Lord God, Saviour, and the King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, glory be to you forever. Amen. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the Son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house? He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the spirits will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. You will be condemned. Glory be to God forever. 
and the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. There's many points we can talk about in today's gospel, but I just wanted to focus on just one part because I believe that confuses a lot of people. And when they hear this, some people may be confused. So I just want to make sure that we explain it so there's no confusion. And this is the part, if we can have it on the screen, please, again, the gospel on the screen. And the part I want to talk about is from verse 31. So the gospel from verse 31, this is what it says. It says, Therefore, I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. So what does that mean? Does that mean that there are sins that are forgiven and the sins that are not forgiven? Okay, if that's the case, then how can our Lord Jesus Christ say, if anyone speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven, but if he but it speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. Isn't the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Father, are one? We say the Holy Trinity, they are one. And then the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So why, if they speak something bad against our Lord Jesus Christ, it will be forgiven, but not against the Holy Spirit? It sounds a bit confusing. If they are one, so what's the difference? And this is, there's a lot of commentaries by the Church Fathers about this. And... Uh, uh, you know, church fathers like St. Augustine and St. John, um, uh, John, John Chrysostom, they basically said there's no, our Lord Jesus Christ said th this, there's no sin that's unforgiven. There's no unforgivable sin. There's no such thing as an unforgivable sin. Any sins that we repent about and confess about, that gets forgiven. So we need to get that clear. Any sin that we repent about, it's forgiven. It's finished. So what are we talking about here? And why is the separation between the Son and the Holy Spirit? It's because they said the people at that time, they didn't know Christ that well. So if they blaspheme against him, if they say, who are you? They, some of them say you're crazy, out of your mind. And even his close people, his relatives at some stage told our Lord Jesus Christ, you are crazy, out of your mind. And you will see them, the gospel of St. Mark, they said, you're out of mind. Who do you think you are? You're claiming to be God. So even people did not know our Lord Jesus Christ at this stage, that he is God. There was doubts, and, but some people were doubting, and, and they're questioning, who are you? So he said, I'll give them the excuse, okay? But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, you knew that from the Old Testament. They knew from the very beginning about the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit, because these Pharisees and scribes, the people, they know the law very well. And the law in the Old Testament is very clear about the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon the, the prophets, the priests, the kings, and they knew the scriptures were by the Holy Spirit. So they knew the work of the Holy Spirit. They believed in that very clearly, and they knew that this is the Spirit of God. Everyone knew that in the Old Testament. So what happens here when they come and say anything against the Holy Spirit? So when they turn something that's good and something that's pure and holy to say that this is something you know he's taking out by the uh, by the spirit of of, uh, of rules of evils of demons and they make things that's good turn it into bad then that cannot be forgiven why because what does the holy spirit what is the work of the holy spirit in our life the holy spirit mainly two things the bible says and john said no one can believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is God except by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit helps us to believe that Christ is God, help us to believe in the divinity of Christ. People who believe that Christ is God, it's through the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit touches their heart and they make them believe that Christ is God. So the first thing is the Holy Spirit makes me believe that Christ is God. Also, the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts me to repent. When I do something wrong, the Holy Spirit tells me this is wrong. Repent about this. Stop doing this. The Holy Spirit convicts. And that's why the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit will convict and will tell us 
that we need to repent. So the main work of the Holy Spirit in our life is to make us believe that God, Christ is God and for help us to repent or convict us to repent. So if I reject the Holy Spirit, that means I'm not believing that Christ is God and I'm not going to repent. Can you see that? If I'm rejecting the Holy Spirit, if I'm blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and said the Holy Spirit is bad and, and these people you know, blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, well, Lord Jesus Christ was doing something good and saying that's bad, then what happens? They're not believing that Christ is God, and they're not going to repent because they're not accepting the Holy Spirit. So what's going to make them repent? That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So what happens if someone continues like that for the rest of their life? They don't believe in Christ, and they don't repent. What's going to happen? When they die, obviously, they're not going to make it to heaven because they didn't believe in Christ, and they didn't repent. Therefore, they will perish. Therefore, they will not be forgiven their sins. Is because they did not allow the Holy Spirit to work in their life to lead them to repentance. That means, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when someone lives all their life rejecting the work of the Holy Spirit and they die in that state. Therefore, obviously, if they haven't repented, they're actually going, not going to heaven. So can you see the link now? That's why this sin cannot be forgiven. Why? Because that person will never repent. And if there's no repentance, there'll be no forgiveness. That's what it means. But if that person in the last second of their life came to know Christ and they repented, of course will be forgiven. Because any sin that's repent, that we repent about gets forgiven. Okay, So we have to make sure this is, this is very clear. And that's why our Lord Jesus Christ went on and said um, later on, he's talking about the good tree and the bad tree. Because... The, the Pharisees and scribes were hypocrites. They pretend to be good people, but they're actually bad from the inside. So he was rebuking them, and he was telling them that towards the end, he said, for every idle word men may speak, that's verse 36, but I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will, be giving account, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So he's telling them for every idle word will give an account. What about all the things that he's been saying about me? That have been saying that I'm an evil person and I'm taking the evil spirits out by the ruler of, of the devil. Imagine that. Imagine how much they're going to be accountable for these things. Turning something good into something bad. So here it's very important that he's telling them don't pretend that you're good and, you, and, you, and you inside your heart, it's, you're saying all this stuff. You know, a good tree, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Don't be hypocrites. And that was the main sin of the Pharisees, is hypocrisy. And what happened is, because they're using good words, they pretend to be nice, they're using big words and to appear nice before people, they thought that was enough. They deceived people by how they're acting. They act in you know, righteousness and holy from the outside, but inside the heart they were full of corruption and blackness. And that's why our Lord Jesus Christ used to rebuke them and tell them, woe well, to you hypocrites, because he hated that sin of hypocrisy. And how is this relevant to us today? We can, re we can relate to that today, because there's what's happening in our world today is people are using very nice words from the outside but to deceive people away from Christ, to deceive people away from the truth, to deceive people and to take, the, take them away from what the church is teaching. They're using big words like acceptance, inclusive, to be inclusive, tolerance, love, all these big nice words that appear nice from the outside. But these words have been twisted, have been used to achieve an agenda of the devil, to take people away from the truth, when they, when they start legalizing sin, the different types of sin that's been legalized recently, all the different things that, you know, a few years ago, we thought these are things are bad. No way they can be legalized. Now they're legalized and they're trying to legalize more of the sins. What's happening? That's because of love. That's because of to be inclusive. That's because of tolerance between people. That's because of all these nice words they use, but the purpose is deception, this hypocrisy there. 
And that's why we have to be careful not just to follow the appearance from the outside because we need to understand and have wisdom to see at the hidden agenda. What is the hidden agenda behind all these big words that are being used in the world nowadays? The devil is trying to lead people away from God. The devil is trying to deceive people. And if you object to these things, they will say you're not loving, you're not caring, you're not inclusive, you're not tolerant. We're all this stuff. But this is hypocrisy. Because why? This is not the intention. The intention is to deceive people. But we as Christians know this very well. And we as Christians don't participate in these things. But we stand firm in our faith and we reject any teaching that's against the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ or against the Bible, against the church teachings. We know that the world will try to deceive us. We know that the world will try to, to make things, you know, the truth, make it into a lie and the lie into the truth, to, sw to twist things around and to turn things upside down. But we actually, we learn from our fathers, the apostles, and during this time of the Pentecost, what did they do? They are the one that turned the world upside down. And we had the readings today in the Acts, if you listen carefully in the Acts, the people said, these are the apostles, the people that turned the world upside down are here in our city. So the disciples, a few, few people, turned the world upside down. And now the devil is trying to reverse that. He's trying to turn the world upside down by the wrong teachings. But we as Christians know his tricks and we shouldn't follow for that. We shouldn't follow after the crowd because everyone is doing this, it must be right. It's because everyone at work is doing this, it must be right. It's because this is what looks like, it looks nice from the outside. That means it's nice. Not everything that sounds good is good. We need to understand, is that in accordance? Our reference is not what the world says. Our reference is not what the fashion is, what society says, what the news says, what the trend is. This is not our reference. Our reference is the Word of God, and the Word of God does not change. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God does not change. People may change, your fashion may change, the society may change, the values may change, but God does not change. The belief does not change. And that's what we should be strong in sticking with. Otherwise, we'll be like these Pharisees and scribes, hypocrites, and our Lord Jesus Christ condemn them today. He said, at least if you're bad, say you're bad, but don't pretend you're good when you're bad. That's hypocrisy. A good tree produces good fruit, but a bad tree produces bad fruit. You can't mix the two together. So God give us wisdom to be able to stand against the wrong teachings and to stick fast and strong to our Christian beliefs according to the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Bible and the church. Glory be to God forever. Amen. the saints of